Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this cinematic synth pad from scratch in Omnisphere. Okay, so as you can hear, we've got this kind of big, spacious, vintage sounding synth pad, which is a bit sort of uh, Blade Runner-esque. This is a preset called Escapist, and it was included in the Synth Vault in October 2021. If you're a member of the Synth Vault, then you can grab this preset for free just by logging into your account. If you're not yet a member, just head to synthvault.net. You can sign up, it's completely free, and you'll be able to download this preset for free as well as a whole load of other presets for Omnisphere. So let's have a look at how to create this sound. Okay, so the first thing is we're gonna just make sure that we have the signal path set to shared mode, okay? So what shared mode does is it makes Omnisphere kind of behave a bit more like a classic synthesizer. So when it's in normal mode, each of these layers kind of act individually um, and they each have their own filter, they each have their own envelopes. When it's in shared mode, essentially the filter and the envelopes and also the effects share the signal path. So it behaves more like a traditional synth in that you have separate oscillators which are kind of sharing the filter and the envelopes and the signal path there. So now we've got that switched on, we'll start with layer A. So layer A is set to synth mode um, and we've got it set to the OB8 saw, which is in our classic waveforms and under the sawtooth. Um, so that just sounds like this. And as you can hear, we've kind of got some, let's turn the sound up a bit there. We've got some amp envelope on that already. So you can see we've got our attack set to 3.48 seconds. Um, we've got the sustain all the way up, so our decay is not doing anything. And then we've got our release set to 4.17 seconds. And we've also got the velocity control uh, at halfway there. So firstly, we're gonna switch our unison mode on. So we'll come into unison mode here and turn it on. And you can see we've got this set up. So we've got the uh, depth set to just under 0.7. We've got the spread all the way up. We've got the detune quite low, so that's 0 0.056. Um, we've got it set to fine mode because we don't want it to be detuning too much. And then we've also got the analog and drift settings here. So the analog, that's set to just under 0.3. So what that does is it kind of offsets the phase of the um, oscillators that are in unison there. And then we've got our drift mode as well, which controls the pitch drift. So if we kind of move that, you can see that that's kind of moving those different oscillators there. So that's set up to just under 0.1. So that's just going to give us a bit of a kind of analog sound there. Okay. we're still getting that kind of bright sawtooth character to that layer there. So then we'll come over to layer B and set that up. So I'll switch off layer A for now and switch on layer B. So layer B is set up to the synth engine again, and we've got it set to a Juno 106 saw. So this is just going to give us a slightly different character sawtooth. And then again, we're gonna switch the unison engine on here. So we'll turn that on. And you can see we've got this set up slightly differently to the first one. So we've got the depth down to just under halfway. We've still got the spread all the way up so that we get that nice kind of wide sound. Uh, we've got the detune set to 0 0.062, so that's quite low. But we have actually got the analog drift quite high here, so just above 0.5. And we've got the drift really low, so 0 0.044 there. So we're not getting a lot of pitch drift there, but we are getting a lot of that kind of analog phase offset between the oscillators. So then let's add these two layers together. So we're getting quite a kind of thick 
sawtooth pad there. Uh, so now we're going to run this through the filter. So as I mentioned, because we're in shared filter mode, uh, we're essentially getting one filter that is going to control both of these oscillators. So we'll switch that on and you can see it's set to low pass filter warm at 24 dB. Got the cutoff set to 0.323 kilohertz. Tiny little bit of resonance there key follow set to halfway and we've got the envelope set to fully on so this filter is going to be fully controlled by the filter envelope so if we come down here we can have a look at our filter envelope uh, the attack is set to 4.76 seconds we have got our sustain down slightly here so that our decay is actually controlling the sound so that's set to just under eight seconds and then we've got the release set to 6.32 seconds so what that's going to do is it's going to ramp up and then when we get to the end of our attack it is going to drop down slightly and very slowly because we've got quite a long decay there we're also controlling this with our velocity we can see that that's set up to 0 0.680 so that means essentially the harder we play on our keyboard the brighter the sound is going to be so obviously now this is filtered it's going to sound a little bit different. So we're starting to get that kind of classic sawtooth synth pad sound there. So the next thing to do is we're going to look at some of our modulation. So we've actually got controls on our fine tuning here. Okay, so Although this is in shared signal mode, the pitch on each layer is actually controlled individually. So we're going to set those up individually. So and on a fine tune here, um, show modulation, we're going to start with LFO1. So we can have a look at LFO1. It's set to sine wave. Uh, it's going to be free flowing and we've got the rate set to quite slow. So that's uh, 0.10 hertz there. And then we've got the depth all the way up. Okay, so we'll unmute that and you can see this is only controlling it a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So that's set to 0.17. I like to use the LFOs to kind of control the fine tune because it does give it this kind of analog drift feel across the entire synthesizer rather than just uh, setting it up in the unison. It just gives it this nice kind of warping character, which is really, you know, almost imperceptible when you're listening to it, but it does just give it that kind of extra um, quality to it. Um, so we'll set up our layer B fine tune as well. So this is being controlled individually by LFO2. So LFO2 is set up slightly differently to LFO1. We've got a sine wave still, we've got it free flowing except the rate is slightly higher so instead of 0.10 it's 0.13. Depth is all the way up again. I will unmute that. So again a very little amount 0.017. So that is now going to sound like this. So that just gives us a little bit of extra kind of vintage character. As I said, it's almost imperceptible, but it does just add this little kind of uh, warping sound to it, which just, you know, um, makes it sound a lot more vintage and a lot more kind of classic. Uh, so next we're going to look at our LFO3 mod. So if you notice there, both of our fine tunes are set up to LFO3. So. LFO3 is set up with a sine wave, again free flowing, but the rate as you can see is a lot higher here. So that's set to 4.45 hertz. Now this is almost kind of uh, vibrato speeds here. I tend to find the sweet spot for vibrato is kind of around 5 hertz, 6 hertz, somewhere around that. So this is almost kind of vibrato speeds. Um, but you can see here we've got the depth set to zero. So to start with, this is not going to be doing anything. Uh, we'll unmute it. As you can see, we've got it set up to 0.66. So it's still not a lot of uh, detuning there, especially considering this is the fine tune, but you'll see what that kind of adds to it in just a minute. Um, and again, we'll come over to layer B and this is also being controlled with LFO3. So we'll unmute that and again, We've got it, yeah, just about the same there. So then obviously this is still not going to have any effect on our sound until we start controlling the depth. So the depth is being modulated by envelope four. And this is where it kind of gets interesting because we're going to be kind of stacking layers of modulation together so that a number of things kind of control the sound. So let's have a look at our envelope four. So the reason I've chosen um, the envelope four here is because out of the mod envelopes, it's the only one that can be controlled polyphonically. So 
by pressing that little button there, that's switching on polyphonic mode, which essentially means that each key that I press is going to trigger a different envelope. So each key I press is going to get this kind of envelope following going on on the LFO3 depth there. Um, so I'm going to unmute our LFO3 here and you can see that is set to fully on. And then the envelope is set up. So we've got a seven second attack, sustain is all the way up, and then we've got a one second release. But again, you can see that the depth control is set to absolute zero here. So we then need to kind of modulate that depth control. So that is being controlled by our velocity. And again, 100% control here. So what is essentially going to be happening is when we press a key, depending on how hard we're pressing it, it's going to control our LFO. But the velocity with which we hit the key is actually going to control how much of that LFO we're going to get on it. So if I press a key quite hard, we should now hear that. So you can hear that kind of almost vibrato pitch wobble that kind of builds in and of course it doesn't come in straight away if we controlled the LFO depth just with our velocity then we would have got that LFO sound that kind of vibrato sound all the way through it but instead we're controlling it with our envelope so we press a key it slowly builds in that kind of vibrato sound and then sustains it there so there it is if I press the key quite hard if I press the keys quite softly there's no in here as much okay so we're nearly there now so let's go over to our effects so on the layers here um, as I said at the beginning because we're in shared signal mode uh, this is essentially instead of having individual effects channels for each of the layers, it just has one effects channel for the entire thing. So both of our oscillators are gonna be running through this ultra chorus. So the mix is set to uh, 0.35, the rate is 0.272, the depth is just under halfway, a tiny little bit of delay there, it's set to linear shape, and we've got lush mode on. So this gives us that kind of classic chorus sound. There we go, just kind of warms it up a little bit. And then on our common effects channel, so we've got some precision comp. This is just to kind of squash the sound together a little bit. Um, so we've got input 1.92, we've got ratio 4.2, uh, sustain just under 9 dB, release 1.2 seconds. Um, so that is just going to kind of squash the sound and give it a sort of tightness. Um, we'll ignore the toxic for the moment. Proverb obviously is a big part of this sound. So we've got the mix set up to 20. Um, this is what kind of gives us that sort of uh, nice long blade runnery type sound there. where it just kind of flows off of the pad. So for this particular reverb sound, the size is set to 42 there. Uh, time is quite long, so we've got that set to 11,000 milliseconds, a little bit of pre-delay, 14 milliseconds. Obviously you can dial the CPU load in yourself, depending on how powerful your computer is. So obviously if you've got a good computer, you can get a really high quality reverb by turning this up. But if your computer is kind of struggling, you can turn that down quite a bit. Uh, the density is set to the all the way up uh, we've got the tone set to uh, 0 dB on both of those um, and then we've got the diffusion all the way up and the width all the way up as well and we've got a bit of reverb shaping going on here so the low frequency is set to 1000 Hertz um, and the low time is kind of extended a little bit here and then the high frequency we've got that set to 13,000 Hertz um, and the time is quite low so what that's essentially going to do is the top frequencies the very top frequencies on this anything above that 13 Hertz 13 kilohertz crossover is going to be uh you know very short reverb time but anything below a thousand hertz is going to be quite a long reverb time which is what gives us that nice mm. 
that nice deep reverted tail there. Okay, and then lastly, we've also got our modulators. Okay, so this is going to be our mod wheel and our aftertouch. So we'll start with the mod wheel. Uh, so on the mod wheel, we've got the imager. So normally in these videos, you'll see me put the imager on and I tend to say it's just a kind of utility to control the gain. Well, obviously I've controlled the gain a little bit with this one, but we're also using the auto panner. So the rate for the auto panner is set to quarter notes. And then as you can see, the depth is off, but this is being modulated with our mod wheel. So the mod wheel is set to 50%. So essentially, when I turn the mod wheel up, we're gonna get this 50% auto panning thing. So if you're not listening to this on headphones or good speakers, you might not hear the effect, but. There we go, we get this nice kind of wide stereo panning going on there. And then we've got the Toxic Smasher on our Aftertouch. So if we switch this on, you can see we've got the mix set to zero, show modulation, Aftertouch, unmute that. So that's set to uh, just under 0.4 for the mix on our Aftertouch. Uh, crush is quite low, 0.13. The Reduce is set to 0.34. We've not got any wave shaping going on here. Um, and we've got it set to uh, the bandpass filter with the cutoff set to 0.403 kilohertz and quite a lot of resonance there, 0.6. So when I depress the keys, we get that tiny little bit of bit crusher there. Okay, so that was how to create the preset Escapist. As I mentioned at the start, this is a preset from the October 2021 SynthVault presets. Now, if you're not a member of SynthVault, head to synthvault.net, you can sign up for completely free and you can get these presets for free. Every single month, there'll be brand new presets. There's presets for Spectrosonics Omnisphere, presets for Pigment, there's presets for a Yuhi synth every single month, and there's presets for a Wildcard synth every single month. And you'll also be able to get more of these tutorials as well. So every month, I'll be doing two tutorials, and you'll be able to access those early in the synth vault. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed creating this preset. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to keep up with the latest presets and tutorials. And until next time, take care.